I'm sorry for some of you that I need to preach in English today. It will be a little bit harder for me, but I prefer to be easier for the youth. I know that uh, Holy Spirit can touch the youth and the teenagers today. And uh, yeah, let's pay all of us attention to the Word of God. I will read from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. To 29, some important verses about the life of Moses. <coughs> by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured seeing him who is invisible." By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he would destroy the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. Amen. You may be seated. I'm not sure if this photo is telling you something, but in June last year, there was something bad which happened, and basically they wanted to use this ship, a few guys wanted to use this ship to visit Titanic. and. The CEO chose to use carbon fiber to build Titan structure rather than titanium or steel. Another wrong decision was that the CEO chose to fire a director who raised concerns about the safety of Titan. The third decision, the third choice, which was wrong, was the fact that the CEO chose to not follow industry safety standards. As you know, for people who chose to pay 250k dollars to visit Titanic. And basically they chose to sign a waiver that mentioned death numerous times. As you know, all five people died by implosion. Their death was the sum total of their decisions. Well, our life is the sum total of all the decisions we make every day. You cannot go a single day without making at least one choice. We choose where we will do our school, where we will work, we choose our job, where to live, we choose our house, who to marry with, what to eat, we choose what to wear. We choose the clothes we buy, and so on. And all the choices you make are influenced by emotions, desires, and the values you have. And basically, your values determine your choices. And this is very important. Your values determine your choices. And I don't want to change your choices today because I can't. I want to change your values, because if you change someone's values, you will change his choices also. The simple act of deciding supports the notion that we have free will, and we waive the benefits and cost of our choices, and then we cope with the consequences. So we have values. We have, we have decisions or choices, and we have consequences. You can control your choices, but you cannot control your consequences. There may be endless ways to look at the types of choices, 
however it is sliced or parsed, choices define us. You are who you are based on the choices you make. And let's, God forbid, let's exemplify like, let's imagine that Christy Boario is starting smoking today. This is his choice. This is his decision. Well, I can control my decision, but I can control how much damage I will do to my lungs. You can control your choices, but you cannot control your consequences. Now, your character is highly influenced by your faith. And as, you many, as many of you know, we learn which choices lead to eternal blessings and which lead to short-term happiness. And very often we sacrifice the long-term consequences for short-term pleasures, unfortunately. We learn which choices lead to spiritual success and which lead to failure, while some decisions are minor, like what you eat today. This is a minor decision. But who will you marry with? It's an important decision. We know that we must learn today how to choose wisely because many decisions will determine the quality of your life or our lives. Poor choices lead to a life of misery, while wise choices lead to peace and contentment. Now, as you know, there are 4,000 religions in the world. Christian religion has more than 33,000 denominations. And many of the teenagers, many of the youth, are asking which is the, the true religion, which is the true faith. How do I know that I'm really walking by faith in Christ? Because anyone says, my religion is the true one. That's why today I want to talk about choosing your faith. Why? Because you only live once. I don't agree with shooting or killing uh, video games. But one day I was surprised to find out that Lucas, one of my children installed on my iPad, I don't know why, because it's only me, I know the password, I think so, uh, and he, install, he installed such a game. I didn't know about that, but I, I was like, Lucas, come to me and let's, let's have the dinner, and he told me, I will come to you after I die, and there was, what? After that, I, 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 found, I found out what he was meaning. Basically, he told me, after I will be shot, I will be killed, I will come to you, because after that I, will, I can continue my game and I can be revived again. I can uh, live starting from scratch. I can start that video game from scratch and play again. Well, in real life, you only have one life. You will only die once. That's why it's extremely important which is the real faith. And we will see today that the real faith will choose God over Pharaoh. And in verse 24 it says, By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. One of the greatest choices we make is to obey Christ in all things. And, well, obedience doesn't come naturally for us. My first uh, two daughters, Grace 13, Eliza 11, have this important job to wash the dishes every day and clean the kitchen and so on. There was none time in their life when they were like, Hallelujah, I have to clean the dishes. None. Because obedience does not come naturally for us. Our sinful nature often influences our decisions, choices, habits, and priorities. And Moses had to choose between two completely different lives. 
the life that led him to one day becoming pharaoh or with untold prestige and power, or the life that he would abandon everything he knew in order to lead God's people out of slavery. If you were him, what would you have chosen? If you don't choose God, you are left with Pharaoh. I want to tell you today that God sent his son to die for you. Satan hasn't done this, although most of the people are choosing him. God will give you peace and forgiveness. What Satan will give to you? John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And if you choose Satan, if you choose the devil, if you choose Pharaoh, he is stealing your purity, your innocence, your peace, your blessings. But he's not stopping just stealing something from you. He will kill your conscience, your moral principles. And he's, he wants to destroy your reputation, your future, your family. Now listen, God is giving you an abundant life. We must consciously strive to follow Christ every day in order to live a life of faithfulness to God. Ten years ago, ten years ago I had to move from Arad to Deva. I was called by our actual pastor, Brother Cornell, to come and help the ministry there in Deva. It was a hard decision for me and my life to leave a church with one, more than 1,000 members and go to a smaller one with, 13, with 300 and something like that. To leave our friends, to leave our serving there and start from scratch. Well, the same time, there was another guy who moved, but not, he was not moving from Arad to Deva, he was moving from Arad to Bucharest. After 10 years, 9 or 10 years, he called me, and basically he told me that he was moving to Bucharest to sell drugs, to be involved in all sorts of addictions, to be involved in all sorts of sinful life. And he was crying when he was talking to me, and he said, Satan gave me nothing. After 10 years working for the devil, after 10 years living a sinful life, I have 60 bucks in my pocket, I have no family, I have no church, I have no future, I have no peace. You, Christy, have a wonderful family. You have a great church. You have a peaceful life. Why? I have chosen Pharaoh. I want to tell you today that the real faith will choose God over Pharaoh. And may God help everybody of us to do the same. Amen. The real faith will also choose holiness over sin. And let me underline this because this is extremely important most of australian romanian english guys do not have a problem of choosing god over pharaoh they will raise their hand they will come to church but they will stop here most of them because in verse 25 it says about moses choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God, than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. If you choose God, if you do the first step, you will choose to be like Him. And let me tell you straight that He hates sin. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, these six things the Lord hates, yet seven are an abomination to him, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discard among brethren. Testify yourself today. Do you hate sin? Do you hate what God hates? Or do you love what God hates? Sin is sweet now, but it's full of bitterness tomorrow. Holiness is bitterness now, 
but it's sweet tomorrow. Sin will bring you applause from your colleagues, from your neighbors, from the society itself. Holiness instead will bring you suffering, isolation, anger, and so on. For speak. Peter chapter 4 says, For we have spent enough of our past lifetime. Please underline, our past lifetime. When you choose God, when you choose Jesus, when you are born again, your present will be different compared to your past. And Peter says, When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, and so on, in regard to this day, Think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood, f- flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. When you choose God, you have to put a stop to your sinful life. May God help us to do that today. When you choose God, something great is happening. Your mindset is changed. And because your thoughts are changed, your vocabulary is changed. And also your works are changed. Imagine an area of land you want to grow tomatoes. Well, you cannot rip tomatoes tomatoes if you don't sow tomatoes. But before sowing, you have to clear your area of vegetation, weeds and so on. Today Today you have to clear your heart of sinful desires. Your past will be forgiven if you repent today. Hosea says in chapter 10, verse 12, So for your self-righteousness, rip in mercy, break up your fellow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. The issue is that repentance hurts. It brings tears to your heart, but do not forgive. After the surgery comes the healing. After the surgery comes the healing. I read about Thomas, who was a chaplain during the Civil War of the United States. He was also a pastor there. And during a visit to the dentist, it wasn't like it's nowadays. During that visit, he was asked by the dentist, does that hurt? And Thomas immediately answered, of course it hurts. It is in your business, as in my profession, the pastor said. We have to hurt before we can help. Maybe this message will hurt you today. But after the surgery comes the healing. After the tears come the happiness. May God help us. And the third test of choosing real faith. Well, real faith will choose heaven over Earth, heaven over earth. Verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. Brothers and sisters, Moses' choice was between the temporary earthly wealth and the everlasting rewards of heaven. The secret in these words is, for he looked to the reward. It's very important where your eyes are looking at. It's extremely important. Do you remember Stephen? He lived a holy life, and holiness brings, as I already told you, suffering from the moment. In Acts chapter 7, verse 59, it says, And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. But the secret is not there. The secret is in verse 55. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven, looked to the reward, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Brothers and sisters, please pay a lot of attention. I will tell you something very important. Your eyes contribute to 85% of your total knowledge. 
85% of the information coming to your mind. It's coming through your eyes. So it's extremely important where you look at every day, every moment. Stephen had to choose. Should I look to earth and stone them back? Or should I look to heaven and forgive them? Should I look to Jesus or to the guys oppressing me? Should I look to the throne or should I look to the stones? Every decision in your life will be highly influenced by what you are looking at. It says about Eve in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasing to the eyes, and we usually choose what is pleasant to the eyes, to our eyes, and this is so wrong. Moses said, I will choose by looking at to the heaven, to the reward. And let me ask you, everybody of you, do you filter your information? Or you let your eyes consume everything they want? It's mind, it's eye, it's information, and it's decision. If your mind has faith in God, your eyes will be pure. Amen. Therefore, your information will be right. And if the information is right, the Holy Spirit can transform the information into revelation. And your decision will be right. Will be right. I want to close the first message from today about choosing your faith. We're telling to the youth, to the teenagers being here, about my personal testimony, I was, I was about 11 or 12 years old. I was graduating primary school. I was not listening to my parents. I wasn't obeying them. I was serving in church. I was singing. I was there with my parents, but my heart wasn't transformed. And someday... Our teachers gave us a, a free vacation to, to the beach because our school wanted to reward us for the results we had. And one day I was going away from the shore, although I didn't know how to swim. I forgot to, to tell you that my parents didn't agree to let me go there. But in the end, I told them that it's my life. It's my personal decision. Basically, in my heart, I was no longer... I didn't any longer wanted to serve God or obey them. I was thinking I will go there and come back with new language, with new works, with new friends. I don't need God, I don't need Jesus. I don't need my parents to have a great life. That's what I was thinking. And one day, as, as I told you, I was going away from the shore, although I didn't know how to swim, and suddenly I no longer felt the bottom of the sea under my feet. I tried to swim desperately, came at the surface and cried, help, help. You see, in our saddest moments of our life, we are not crying for a new iPhone. We do not need a new jacket. We do not need a new life, a new home. I was crying for help and uh, I wasn't sure that anybody heard me. What I didn't know at that time was the fact that my parents gave me all the money they had when I was living. Because I was the oldest one from nine kids and they decided 
to fast and pray the entire week when I was away. I'm not sure about your riches, but the greatest rich you can have in this life is to have somebody praying for you at home. While you are out with your friends eating pizza, pasta, being at parties, consuming drugs and all of this wrong stuff, the greatest reach you can have is to have somebody praying for you. And uh, one woman heard my cry. She pulled me out of the water. I was saved. I knew it was God's hand there, but as many of you, I didn't change my life then. Three years later, after continuing lying and doing all sorts of bad things, after two or more three miracles in my life, something changed. I was 14 years old. And there was a great service in one of the biggest churches in Arad. I was staying there on the last chair, on the last bench. And uh, the pastor was preaching. And I knew that the entire sermon was for me. At the end of his sermon, he said, if there is anybody who wants to change his life, who wants to be renewed, who wants to be cleaned by the blood of Jesus, who wants to be born again, that pastor said, please come here. And I was the first one coming in the front of the church. And the pastors were praying for me and for us who were there. And that night, I knew that God has forgiven me. But the next days at the school were even harder. The devil tempted me even more. My colleagues invited me to smoke with them in the toilets. They used to bring pornographic materials at the schools. There, was, there were no mobiles then. And it was harder and harder for me to resist. Well, I heard that was a prayer night. That it will be a prayer night at one of the churches from Arad and I went there. But because I was 14 years old, I wasn't allowed to participate. I was so upset. <laughs> I was so sad and uh, I went home crying but I heard that next day it will be another prayer night another starwins as we say at another church and I went to one of the pastors confess all my sins and I said inside in myself I will not go there in front of the church where all the guys who are praying for the Holy Spirit are. I will stay there, but when the first prayer will start, I will go there and nobody will notice because I don't want to be sent home again. Well, at the first prayer, I went there where the fire was, where the prayer was, and one elder prayed with me and my heart and my life was fully transformed I was baptized with the Holy Spirit I was forgiven I was cleaned I was changed 24 years later I'm here today and I want to tell everybody of you that God loves you and God wants to transform your life today. That's why I ask Brother Manu to come and sing a song. I know that it's hard what I will ask today, but if there is anybody of you who needs to be helped in prayer, who wants to confess his sins before God, who wants to be renewed, who wants to be born again, 
if there is anybody of you like that during the song I will invite you to come here in front and we will pray for you maybe next years we will not meet again but let me tell you straight you have the chance to walk with God starting from today every day and if your present is changed if your life is changed your future is also changed you will have a new future you will have a new family you will have a new life